Hello students, welcome to the tutorial of common communication format in CDS ICS for Windows or WinICS. In the earlier tutorial, we have learned how we can apply different content designator schemes inside the CDS ICS for Windows software. Here in this tutorial, we will be specifically giving focus on the application of CDS uh, uh, CCF inside the CDS ICS for Windows. Okay. Now, in the earlier uh, tutorial, you uh, we have already actually uh, discussed about the structure of operation that how we can proceed in uh, selecting the content designator, inside the con content designator, how can we select the tags and subfields, then how can we design the worksheet and how can we enter data into that worksheet and finally, how a database can be populated by using those workout worksheet. Now, let us have a brief recapitulation. Now, if you look into this particular structure, what we have discussed before, it starts with the selection of the you know content designator, then development of the record input sheet, then selection of the record what needs to be catalogued or you know uh, should uh, come under the database, then populating the worksheet and finally, on the basis of that worksheet we need to populate the database. But here comes the you know comes the first and the foremost question that how we can select fields, under a particular field or tag how can we select particular set of subfields, then whether a field or subfield will be repeatable in nature, whether it is mandatory or optional. Then some fields are basically coded fields, in that cases you cannot write something you know uh, or uh, you cannot describe something in that particular field, you need to take the coded value from the manual itself. So, how to manage the coded fields? So, these are all prominent questions uh, you know before us that uh, you know, uh, you know uh, through which we can develop our bibliographical database management systems. Now, CDSI uh, you know CCF manual if you uh, look into that particular manual I already told you that can be freely it can be freely downloadable uh, from the um, you know web even uh, uh, your library may have a copy of CCF B or CCF F. So, let us concentrate our discussion here on CCF B, we will be showing that uh, how different fields can be selected under a particular field how different subfields can be managed, how to manage coded field, how to manage repeatable field with different sets of example and most importantly I will be showing you the biggest advantage of uh, you know uh, CDS ICS as software and CCF as content designator that is record to record linking and field to field linking by giving you the real life example. Okay. Let us have a look into the screen now. Here you see uh, the end part of the uh, CCF B manual includes all tags or fields along with their subfields. Now, suppose I have selected here the page of the manual where it includes all 4 xx fields. Say 400 is a popular place of publication and publisher the subfield first subfield that is the subfield A is the place of publication and here you notice that inside that particular uh, subfield and inside that particular tag one symbol R is given, here R stands for repeatable, it means the 400 as a whole you can repeat, under 400 the subfield A you can repeat but name of publisher is not a repeatable field, full address of the publisher is a repeatable field, country of the publisher is also a repeatable field. So, in the manual itself you will be getting what are the subfields available against a particular tag or field and whether the field as a whole or the subfield are repeatable or not. So, you need to follow this kind of uh, you know structure inside your CDS ICS database. Suppose you are defining the field 400 place of publication and publisher. So, you need to define the A for subfield A place of publication, subfield B name of publisher, subfield C full address of publisher and subfield D country of publisher. 
you need to make 400 as a whole repeatable, subfield A repeatable, subfield C repeatable and subfield D repeatable. So, in this way you can take the help of manual and you can design your database. Now, interestingly in uh, CCF if you are following CCF B, some of the fields are called the coded fields. That means, for that particular field you cannot enter anything in writing you need to take the value of the field given in the manual. That means, there will be n number of options and from that options you have to select judicially what should be the value for the uh, subfield under that particular field. For example, in the screen you can see that 0 5 0 is the tag for physical medium which has only one subfield physical medium code and that is repeatable. That means, one document may be available in print format and in the print format inside the book there may be an electronic version. Uh, the, uh, the simple example I can give you in case of PhD thesis each researcher needs to give the bind, uh, bound volume of the PhD thesis and inside the thesis they need to give one CD-ROM which includes the full text of the thesis. So, here you see 050 is a repeatable field that means you need to repeat that the document is available in print format as well as in optical disk. Now, the print format will have a code 010 the coded value and the uh, optical disk uh, you are using uh, there also uh, the code value will be there and that you need to enter inside the field. Similarly, 060 for type of the material there are different codes and you need to pick up the values uh, actually the appropriate values for that particular field. So, some field you can enter data and for some field you have to pick up the you know coded values. Now, here you see an example definitely one question is coming to your mind that from where we can know the code lists and how can we know what are the coded values against a particular field. Now, there in inside the manual the coded values are given in two formats. There is a section called section 4 that you can consider so you in the screen you can see the section 4 codes used in the data elements. There are 4.1 language codes, 4.2 script codes, 4.3 codes for names of countries, 4.4 role codes and 4.5 is vertical and horizontal relationship code. In fact, this vertical and horizontal relationship code helps us for record to record linking and field to field linking. I will be showing you in the latter half of this tutorial how in real life we can link record to record and field to field inside the CDSIS uh, for Windows software by utilizing CCFB as content designator scheme. So, this is one thing you will be getting all the coded values from the section 4 and uh, it includes a total of 5 different code values. For example, CCF liberally uh, in a using different kind of ISO code for language it is taking the ISO code ISO uh, you know um, 636 for the country uh, specific code it is again taking a ISO code called ISO 3166. So, all these codes you can you, you, you are will be available inside the CCM manual which you can cons uh, consult and you can take the appropriate values. But in some cases the coded values are given in the field itself. Say for example, if you look into the screen you can see that this field 050 physical media the there is one subfield called physical media code physical medium code. Now, this code is given at the end of the subfield say for example, 010 paper, 020 film, 030 braille, 040 magnetic media, 050 laser or optical disk and 900 others. So, these are the coded values available if a particular document uh, you know uh, has two you know uh, manifestation as for example, I already told you that a thesis may have print version as well as the full text version in you know in a CD-ROM. So, there we have to repeat the 050 because it is a repeatable field and we need to use the codes. Now, <coughs> uh, if you if you ask me that can you can, can we uh, prescribe a set of unique tags and subfields 
for all types and size and libraries? I will say no, it is not possible because the requirement of a college library is not quite matching with the requirement of a research library. So, each library needs to take a decision of their own that what are the fields and subfields they need and they need to handle. And WINICES actually provides libraries the freedom to use or to apply any field and under the field any number of subfields and any number of subfields can be repeatable and but you, you, you need to be guided by the uh, CCFB manual whether a particular field is mandatory or optional or repeatable whether it is guided by any coded values or not. Now, <clears throat> on the basis of this discussion we already know that there is no unique rule that these are the uh, you know uh, different tags and subfields uh, that are mandatory uh, for a specific kind of library. According to your requirement you need to take decision. But CCF uh, manual includes a matrix of data sets which may help you in taking decision. Let me show you the matrix of the data field. Now, if you look into the screen you see there is a matrix and how to understand this matrix? It says this is the tag say for example, 0 to 0 is the source of record. Now, it actually indicates different document type books, periodical, report, thesis, patent, standards etcetera. Now, if we see what is the status of 0 to 0, so source of record is mandatory for all document types. So, these are all number and coded fields and from here you need to take decision for example, if you go by the column books. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 are mandatory and rest of the fields are optional in the group of number and coded fields. Now, if we look into the major bibliographic fields like title, key title, parallel title, edition, name of the person, here also you can have a guidance. Suppose, you want to design a, a data sheet on book. So, title is mandatory, key title, parallel title, other title, uniform title are optional name of the person is mandatory, name of the corporate body if available mandatory, name of the meeting if available mandatory, but affiliation is optional. So, in this way we can take a decision that what are the fields that should be mandatory, what are the fields that should be optional, what are the fields that should be repeatable, what are the fields that should be guided by the coded values. So, this matrix is uh, going to help you in designing your uh, data set. Now, uh, let me explore the possibility of designing a data sheet with the minimum essential uh, common minimum essential tags which are mandatory in nature and which are mostly required by uh, the libraries of any type or size. If you uh, have a look into that particular screen, uh, it shows you that uh, suppose I uh, we are designing a worksheet that is the part 1 of the worksheet. So, first one is the 001 record nature is mandatory. Now, record ID if you are using uh, you know WinICES for each and every record WinICES creates a unique ID or unique biblio ID which is represented by MFN master file number. So, the moment you save your record WinICES will give you a master file number for that record that you need to enter here. Then comes the most important field the bibliographical level the subfield uh, indicator positions are 0 zeros. there is only one subfield, subfield delimiter or subfield identifier is the caret sign and subfield is A, but it says that you cannot enter anything manually here, you need to consult the code to take the appropriate value. I will be coming how you can utilize the code value for the field 0 1 5. Similarly, 2 0 source of record another mandatory field, it says that you have to see the code list to create a 5 letter code for your library. According to CCF manual each library must have 5 letter code. So, uh, I am entering data for a college library called as Mednipur college library. I can use an abbreviation called MIDCL. So, in this way you can create a 5 letter code for your library and you can utilize for populating the tag uh, you know 0 to 0. Similarly, 022 is the date of entry, here the requirement is that 
you know there are two sub field character indicator character position indicator character position value is 1 if you are following a standard date format and according to CCM manual the date format should be based on ISO 81801. It means you need to enter date in YYYY MM DD format say for example, two days date if I want to enter inside the date of entry level it will be 2016 representing the year 2016. Then this is the month of July we need to give 07 and this is the date uh, 9 July we need to give 09. So, altogether it will be 2016-0709. So, this is the ISO format of entering date. So, you need to follow that because this is the only date format which later on will allow you to you know sort records according to different dates, date of publication, date of entry, date of modification etcetera. Now, if we look into the next uh, you know important uh, you know tag there 040 language, there also you see the indicator positions values are 0, 0, it has got two sub field caret A and caret B. Caret A is the name of the language and caret B is the script of the language. Here in both the cases you cannot write the language name in you know uh, in word format. Say for example, this document available in English language, I cannot write English E N G L I S H or if it is available in Hindi, I cannot write H I N D I. I need to consult, uh, consider or I need to consult the code and from there for each and every language it is represented by a three letter code. For example, English the ISO code for English language is ENG, ISO code for Hindi language is HIN, ISO code for Bengali language is BEN. So, all the coded values are given in the CCM manual and you need to consider and you need to give only the coded value not the actual name of the language. And you know there is a relationship between the script and the language say for example, English language the script is Roman, if you are using Hindi language the script is Devnagari, if you are using Bengali language the script is also Bengali. So, each and every script is also codified and you need to take the codified value. Here you can have a look of the codified value. Say for example, uh, you know awesome is ASM, Bengali, BEN and different uh, you know script code also there BA, Roman, CA, Cyrillic, but here you can see there is no specific script code for index scripts. So, we need to take the code ZA which represent others. Say there are TA for Tamil, K for uh, Kana, uh, Korean, then Devnagri there is no uh, there is a code for J if you are using uh, Hindi language the code should be J, but if you are using uh, other index script like uh, you know Assamese, Bengali, Oriya there is no specific script code you need to use the other code that is the Z A. Similarly, if you go back to the field 050 physical media and 060 type of materials in both the cases codes are given 040 the bibliographical level A is uh, serial, M for single volume um, monograph, C for multi volume monograph and so on. And as I told you for the source of the record you need to create a 5 letter code. Now we can uh, go, uh, go to the next level that is the worksheet part 2. Here actual bibliographical data actually starting from here 100 ISBN, ISBN is a mandatory field it has got only one sub field, sub field A. Then comes the most important field of any bibliographical data elements that is the 200 title and statement of responsibility. It has got you see two sub fields, sub field A stands for title and sub field B stands for statement of responsibility. Now, in the next level we can have other title related field like 210 parallel title, 240 uniform title, but this will be optional according to the policy of the library you can use it. For example, if you if you if you made a policy that all holy scriptures will be entered under the uniform title, 
So, then you need to use the 240 tag. Say for example, you want to you know uh, give a uniform title for all parts of Vedas, Atharva Veda, Rig Veda, etcetera. So, there you need to use that one. So, different types of or different editions of Bible. So, you, you want to use a uniform title Bible there. So, you need to use the you know um, tag 240. So, depending on the policy actually it uh, you know you need to take decision. Now, if we come to the uh, next level of the worksheet that is the name of the person. So, there are actually these are basically the primary access point 300 is the name of the person subfield A, B and E are there A for surname, B for forename and E is the role in coded form. So, CCF gives you different uh, coded roles say where, what is the uh, code for author, what should be the code for the editor you need to use that uh, during the data entry operation. And here uh, all kind of names will be going here say author, compiler, editor, uh, illustrator, um, photographer all will be going here and their role needs to be indicated by the subfield E. Now, if your document is written by a corporate body you need to use the uh, tag 310 it has also got two subfields name of the corporate body and subordinate body. Say for example, one document is prepared by the school of social sciences under IGNU. So, IGNU is the main corporate body. So, subfield A will include IGNU and subfield B will include school of social sciences. So, in this way we need to manage the corporate uh, name. Another you know uh, 3xx field is 320 name of the meeting or conferences and interestingly uh, you know it has got altogether 5 subfields A for name of the meeting, B subordinate or superordinate unit, G is the place of meeting, H is date of meeting and J is the number of meeting. All we have to enter here into 320 field if we are cataloging a conference proceedings or a symposia or a you know uh, workshop volume, seminar volume. Next comes the comes the you know uh, part 4 that is the uh, publication and distribution area 400 is the place and publisher subfield A stands for place of publication subfield B stands for name of publisher 440 stands for date of publication here also again you have to give the date in ISO format ISO 8601 format as I told you that it should be YYYY MMDD format. Now, <coughs> Now, you, you, you got an idea about the nature of data entry in uh, uh, CCF or in a bibliographical database. So, you need to follow this and another interesting area is the subject descriptor which is basically represented in uh, CCF by the tag 620. So, all 620 uh, you know um, field can be populated by using a standard vocabulary or a standard subject heading list like library of congress subject heading list, MACE or altogether at the same time you can use some of the tags which are non-standard. So, there you need to indicate whether the term taken from a standard vocabulary system or not. Let us have a look into the screen you can understand. Say 610 classification scheme and 620 is the subject descriptor. A is the subject descriptor and B is the name of vocabulary control scheme. If you are taking the uh, you know term from a uh, from the library of congress subject heading list you need to give the name in the subfield B. But at the same time we should not forget that uh, uh, CCF is actually ranges from the leader field to you know uh, 6xx field. But the some of the local fields are also uh, required you know at the time of data entry. Say for example, one particular book has got 5 copies. So, 5 accession number you need to enter and that cannot go into the CCF main tags. You need to define a set of local tags which are called non-CCF tags. If you have a look into the screen you can understand this. So, at the end of the data entry framework I have created uh, 900 field for accession number that is a repeatable field. So, suppose a book has got 5 copies, so all 5 uh, accession number can be can uh, we can put here. 901 can be the copy number, it is also repeatable, and 902 may be the department number uh, name to indicate that this particular book or document uh, you know 
is uh, requested by such and such department. And at the end of the worksheet, you should give the data entered by whom with the date and checked by whom that is required for quality control of the data sheet. So, altogether when you are using you know that um, uh, CCF B inside the uh, CDS as is for Windows software, there are altogether 4 tasks. You need to create FTT on the basis of the uh, selected tags and subfields. Then you need to check different kind of mandatory and repeatable fields. Then you need to create a suitable worksheet for data entry activities. And finally, you need to create one field selection table to indicate what are the fields that needs to be indexed. And please remember that uh, CDS ICs for Windows gives you altogether 9 different techniques for indexing, 0 for the whole field, 1 for each sub field, 2 if the term is enclosed within the angular bracket, 3 if the terms are enclosed within the forward slash and backward slash and 4 if you are interested to uh, uh, you know index each and every word. So, these are also all together repeated with the prefix from again 5 technique 5 to technique 8. So, altogether 9 different techniques are available in uh, CDS ISIS for Windows through which you can create your inverted file. And uh, these indexing techniques are very uh, you know sophisticated and all kind of retrieval features can be achieved through FST. And PFT is basically controls the display format after the retrieval of the records. So, I hope that you understand the basic operation of utilizing uh, content designator scheme like uh, CCFB inside the CDSIS for Windows software. Thank you.